Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. I have a really odd range of wines in front of me today. Four white wines, uh, four different countries, four different grape varieties. So uh, let's just dig in and see where we get. Um, first one, uh, we are in Italy with Rallo, that's the name of the wine, Grillo, that's the name of the grape. Uh, it's a grape that they used to use for Marsala, and this is from Sicily. And because uh, we don't all drink all that much Marsala, nothing to do with chicken tikka masala, um, and uh, so they've got to find some use for the grapes. And now they're, they're doing some pretty decent wines with stuff like Grillo, there's another one called Catarato that you might see. Uh, but let's have a go with this one and see where we get. Well, it's a bit of pithy citrus fruit there. Um, feels like there's maybe a, 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 something like a touch of uh, green gauge, maybe even a bit of guava in there. Smells like it's going to be quite full bodied. It feels like they've, they've done a little bit of uh, keeping the juice in contact with the skins, which has given this a slightly musky, um, musky edge. But uh, it tastes like it's still going to be fresh and uh, zesty. Yeah, and that skin contact's just giving that musky walnut and pear skin character. The zippy citrus fruit, quite full bodied style. Fresh finish, perfectly decent, nothing too remarkable, but um, a nice midweek quaff. Don't mind that at all. Okay, next one, uh, Atalaya do Mar, uh, Godeo. Atalaya do Mar, name of the wine, Godeo, name of the grape, and it's from a, a place called Monterey. Uh, so Godeo is a, it's a really nice grape. Uh, it grows uh, in, the, uh, in that little bit of uh, Spain that's above Portugal. Uh, and in this place, Monterey, it, uh, it does pretty well. And in the bit next to it called Val de Oras, also does pretty well. Probably a bit no, better known for the wild wines of Val de Oras, uh, but let's see how we are with Monterey. Well, this has also got some of that musky, walnut, skin contacty type uh, type of character coming going on. But there's also baked apple, um, and it feels like a, not not quite as citrusy, but uh, feels almost like it is finer boned than the the grillo, uh, grillo, 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 grillo. I don't know what it is, but um, uh, it's probably grillo. It's Italian, uh, and uh, yeah. But here, uh, they're, they're, you get more of a sense of the soil. Uh, if the first one was about the grape variety and wine making, you feel that like there's a mineral edge coming through here. Uh, it smells like it's going to be finer. Um, it, it, one of those wines that uh, smells like if it's going to be quite rich, but has actually got usually got quite a bit of tang and uh, brininess to it, because we are quite, quite close to the sea here. Very tasty wine. Um, what I like about it is it's got this, um, it, it's like rounded, quite full flavours, but in a lean structure. So uh, the flavours you're getting, uh, there's a freshness about them. There's a zip and a zest and life about them. And that mineral uh, acidity backbone is just keeping it all fresh. And yeah, the, the flavours around it are quite plush, but uh, they are really being kept in check by, uh, uh, by the minerality and the acidity. I like that very much. Good now and also feels like he's got the uh, the legs to go on for another year or so. Let's see whether the next one we can say the same of. We are in Austria now. Uh, this is uh, Rainer Vess. Uh, he's a winemaker. Uh, Leubenberg, that's the name of the vineyard. Grüner Veltliner 2010 from the Wachau. Uh, now Rainer Vess uh, made his name along with a guy called Fritz Miesbar at uh, a place called the Freiweingartner Wachau in the uh, in the 1990s. Um, it's now known as uh, Domaine Wachau. Uh, and they both moved on. Uh, Rainer Vess has set up by himself. Um, the other guy, Fritz Miesbar, is at Stadkrems, I think, uh, if he's still there. If you're not there, still there, sorry for it. Uh, but yes, so, so Rainer Vess, I, I don't know if he's got any of his own vineyards or whether he's buying fruit, but uh, Leubenberg is a, a particularly finely sighted site, finely sighted site uh, in the Wachau. Well, this feels like it's going to be on the uh, fatter, riper end of Grüner Veltliner. Grüner Veltliner, uh, it's, if you pick it early, it's got this uh, quite zesty white pepper and grapefruit character. Um, you pick it late, it goes a bit more uh, gingery almost, and uh, yeah, there's still the citrus fruit there, but it's much more voluminous and voluptuous. Uh, here, it's got some of those more exotic, uh, maybe more of the tropical edges, going into the melon, maybe even on the peachy side. But it's got that uh, that Gruner backbone that's uh, that's going to keep it get, get, give it a little, that little bit of uh, um, sternness and uprightness that, that um, a fleshy wine needs to keep to, to hold it together. I don't know if a wine tasting of lilt is a good thing, but you get that a lilt with the totally tropical fruit and taste. I don't know if it's available on all markets, but. It was this uh, pineapple and grapefruit uh, fizzy drink, and it's got the, both those flavours there, with a little bit of the Gruner pepperiness, maybe even a little bit of that lentil that some people find, um, uh, but uh, underpinned by minerals and uh, underpinned by the, um, uh, the fresh zestiness. 
Um, feels like a wine that I want to drink quite a lot of now, but I wouldn't be surprised uh, uh, to see it still going strong five years from now. Uh, whether you choose to keep it five years, whether you drink it now, it's personal fre preference. It doesn't need it. If you keep it, uh, maybe some of those zippier citrus edges will have, tamed, uh, will have calmed down and it, uh, the peachy edge will come more to the fore, but um, it really is horses for courses. You can have your uh, Garuna and eat it. Or drink it, or whatever metaphor you want to use. Um, Final wine, Land of Hope, uh, Reserve Chenin Blanc, 2010, South Africa. Does it say whereabouts in South Africa? Yes, it does, Stellenbosch. Give it a whirl. Is this a barrel fermented one? Uh, yes, um, free run juice, blah, blah, fermented and matured on the lees in small Burgundian barrels. And of course, you know exactly what's, what that uh, does to a wine, don't you? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, what I might do is I'll, I'll do a, a video soon that tells that, that uh, my views on what happens when you put a wine in a barrel, but no time, no space to do it now. Quite a high toasty character coming in here, must be from the barrels, um, but then behind it, uh, bits of guava, uh, Chenin Blanc uh, for me always have this bit of apple and bit of citrus, but also some honey, and I'm getting those characters coming through strongly. It almost feels just a little bit too correct, they, I, it, as if... Uh, they could, the winemaker could do with letting his winemaking hair down uh, a little bit more. Uh, it feels, yeah, it feels like bit, ever so slight creases in the jeans type of uh, uh, of Chenin Blanc. Uh, but um, don't let me put myself off it. I'm going to taste it now. Very hard to find a fault with that. It's got this juiciness. It's got that nice bit of toasty oak. It's uh, in balance with the wine. It's not dominating it. It's there in the background. There's this lush peachiness, but I, I still come back to this. It's just that little bit too correct. Uh, I, I wish there was a little bit, bit more funkiness there. Uh, I think that they, with the fruit that they had, it feels like it had a nice ripeness and uh, voluptuous character to it. That um, if they had just been a little less uh, protective, uh, there could have uh, some wildness could have uh, could have come out of it. I don't know whether they're doing natural fermentations here, where just letting the crushing the the grapes and letting the juice spontaneously start fermentation. I, I, I don't think they are. It feels just that little bit too controlled. Nice enough, but uh, not as nice as the Godeo and the uh, uh, the Grunewald Nicer than the Grillo, but hey, I enjoyed them all anyway. See you soon.